Hi there! In this episode, I'm gonna build this vignette. And here it's the Mank Gas Tiger in 35 scale. This kit is the best armored kit I have ever built. I can't show the other kit because I didn't design it yet. Yes, I'm going to use a 3D printer in this project. I will tell the story of this 3D printer and cure machine in the following minutes. As I always say, my imagination is limited to the products available on the market and my ability to make things from scratch. Now these borders are gone. What I'm going to do now? Yes, I will make a tire with weight not effect. I have started to work in my safe zone. Yes, I have some experience with CAD CAM softwares. This is FreeCAD. I'm drawing profile of the tire first. This is just for an example, not the real one. I deleted the original file accidentally. I cut the kit tire and take measurements with a caliper and drawn for hours. It wasn't as simple as it seems. After completed the drawing, I applied round effect and here is the result. Actually, that's not. This one is the real tire, what I draw and export in STL format. This software is Blender. I used Blender for the first time in my life and I loved it. I realized that I could easily do things that I could not imagine doing in a CAD software with Blender and I fell in love with this shit. After a few weeks, finally I learned the basics of Blender and finished the tire design. Except one thing, weight effect. I didn't try too hard for that. After the tire has been completed, I designed a fence for windows. and a bumper and the old objects are ready to print this is Photon Workshop Slicer software comes with Anycubic 3D printers this software works simply as follows after placing the STL format objects on the table automatically creating the support posts slicing at the specified layer thickness and creating a file output for the 3D printer I'm not going to explain this technology how it works because there are millions of videos on YouTube about that. I will share some of them in the comment section below. Instead of that, in this episode I'm looking for an answer about are this machine has a place in scale modeling for real. Let's find it out. This is UV sensitive resin. It smells and try to use it in a well ventilated room. This is the build plate. And we are ready to go. My first print completed after about two hours. This is the washing tank comes with Anycubing wash and cure machine. I fill it with isopropyl alcohol. I'm setting it about 15 minutes. It washes printed parts in a whirlpool. I've tried this weapon for removing the printed parts spot. It's too much for that job. 
After a fifth try, I found the real tool for this job, a number 10 blade. The most important part is curing, because freshly printed parts are still soft and flexible. You need to cure them as soon as possible. At a sunny day, it's easy, but this cure machine way faster and safer. To be honest, mostly I use it only for that, because sometimes filling the tank with 4 liter alcohol for a few small parts doesn't make much sense. And all parts are ready. I'm very impressed with the result. Ok, let's back to the build. Why do I still feel like something is missing? Because I did not do something to make things harder as always. Let's do it. I designed a tire already, right? How about a rim, a shock absorber and an electric engine, a fender and its arms? How about duplicating this four times? A chassis with full of technological stuff. Yes, it will be a trailer. Let's take a look what I designed. I designed a cabinet full of technological stuff. You are seeing the whole design in pieces for 3D print. About 11 or 12 stations later, here is the box full of 3D printed parts. This is a good example about how SLA printing is still chaotic. These four pieces are from the same batch. I place them to the plate with the same angle but the result is completely different for each other. It's all about surface tension problems with busy batches. You should bring the print surface to the smallest possible level or you should increase the number of batches and decrease the number of pieces. Anyway. This is how I clean printed parts. I cut the supports on edges and delicate connection points with a cutter first, then peeling like an orange. And the old parts are ready to assembly. While you are watching the assembly, let me to tell you the story about these machines. In the last months of the last year, Anikubik contacted me for a sponsorship agreement. It seems I wasn't the only YouTuber they contacted as well. YouTube was suddenly full of 3D printer videos. Anyway, I stated that I didn't accept any sponsorship for my channel because my principle is showing my viewers what I use and recommend only what I like and criticizing products I don't like and I wouldn't change that for a sponsorship. I told them if they wanted they could send me a printer for me to test, but I would only state my honest opinion. I wouldn't read any pre-arrangement marketing text. I would only use the product and comment on what I experienced, even if my experience was bad. And they accepted. I was sure I would be rejected because I thought 3D printers were still not precise enough for scale modeling and more time and advancements were required for this. I should point out once again, this is not an advertorial or sponsored video, just my own opinion. Here is the result of my tests. To summarize, these machines are not tools to help you. These are a hobby on their own. I enjoyed every moment for the process and 3D printing is a hobby that is completely in synchronization with scale modeling. After gaining some experience through trial and error and learning how to operate the printer efficiently, you can print any piece with this machine. The potential of these machines is Simply amazing. I tried printing some parts that are not shown in the video and I was astonished at the result. Of course, it is not all candy and roses. The disadvantage of the 3D printer is the smell of resin that is used in printing. The smell is very intense and irritative. A well-ventilated workspace and a Erebreda mask or similar mask are absolutely necessary. If you want to design and print your own parts, you will also need to learn to operate some 3D printing software. This may seem tedious, however there are a lot of 
uh, ready-to-print objects currently available at the market and a lot of websites sell these. It seems the number of offered items will be increased steadily, so you may still get by without having to learn new software. Speaking especially about the Anycubic Mono, uh, I can comment that based on the observations I made, this is the printer that gives the, the best technical specifications at the lowest price at the current market. Its PPI values and resolution are adequate for scale modeling. In summary, I found the magic tool I was looking for years. I will definitely be using this printer for my even weirder ideas and to build even more customized dioramas. Let's continue with the kit. Like the armored vehicle kits I made before, this one consists of many parts. I will briefly show you the boring and long assembly steps. Finally, everything ready to paint. I'm starting with the primer. I've painted the all remaining details with brush and acrylic paints. I am applying gloss varnish before the decals. Let's make a desert dust pigment with pastels. flat varnish
Now I can apply the final weathering. Light tones first. And darker tones. Let's complete the model. I printed these cans and juice boxes before. I painted them basically. Now I can put them in the baskets. And here is the result. It has some obvious flaws, but for the first edition and first production, I think it's good enough. If I do another one, I don't think so, it will be perfect. I will also use a figure to make the presentation better. I love these brand's figures. I'm painting it with highly diluted paints. Also, I want to build a simple base for better presentation. I built this with foam and balsa wood in an half hour. I'm covering it with plaster of Paris and white glue mixture. I'm sprinkling over on it more plaster of Paris before it has dried. I applied water diluted white glue to the surface and now I'm adding carbonate for fine grain sand effect. Also, I like to use carbonate on snowy dioramas. After half an hour, I'm applying some tire tracks with a vinyl tire which comes with the kit. It looks good for a snowy diorama already, but I'm going to paint it with different sand colors. I'm adding some plants and it's done. I have two diorama ideas with these, so I'm placing them temporarily to the base and not going to glue them. I thank to Anycubic for sent me these amazing machines. I can't wait to use them on my battleship builds in the future. Well, thanks for watching this episode. If you like the video, please like and share. Subscribe my channel if you haven't yet. Also, you can support my channel if you can see the join button below or on Patreon. The links are in the information section below. See you soon on the next episode. Until then, take care yourself and keep modeling. Bye.